One of the homes of the overclocker is the BIOS. The BIOS basically controls all of the basic features of, of your system, especially the CPU and memory. So with the CPU, you've got the multiplier and the front side bus. The front side bus is often the most used tool for overclocking. You basically increase that, and by increasing that, you end up with a higher end frequency because your end CPU frequency is FSB times multiplier, as you can see there. As well as that, there are quite a few settings which are in there for normal desktop use, which when overclocking aren't necessary. Such things include speed step and also thermal, thermal monitors. We have that. It's fine. So we move on. One of the key components of the hardware used is the memory. Now, you'll find the tweakers, overclockers, all the same, they'll always talk about the memory tweaks. What they're talking about is the setup of the dividers and late the latencies. The dividers here, as you can see, influence the end frequency of the memory. Each divider is a maths equation as to the end frequency in, in relation to the front side bus. Also in there is the timings or latencies. These latencies will influence the performance of the system. The tighter the latencies, the tighter the, the performance and the, and the greater the efficiency. Another core area of the motherboard is access to the voltages that each area of the motherboard and pieces of hardware connected to the motherboard receive. So we have areas such as CPU, the MCH, ICH, and the memory, the DRAM. These will influence one another as well as influence the potential of the, of the end overclock. Sometimes you need that little bit more voltage to push through to that higher overclock. One of the influences that you'll often find is that, for example, you might have to get higher voltages on the north bridge to influence tighter latencies on the memory or higher frequencies or maybe access to that divider which seems a little sloppy on lower voltages but with a little extra push it through fine. Having been through the stages of overclocking and having gone through and tweaked everything to where it needs to be, it's then important to go through and be able to actually monitor the settings and tweak it from within Windows. So right here you can see two very common uh, overclocking uh, applications. First one is uh, CPU-Z. CPU-Z is well known for a, a validation program used for mainly frequencies on the CPU but can also uh, cover in information for memory, motherboards and other such areas. The other one is SetFSB. SetFSB allows for FSB tweaking from within Windows. This means that you can boot in at a slower FSB and then when, when you're in Windows, tweak it further to go further. So you've made all the way to past 5 gigahertz, you might be pushing 5.5, could be even further. Well, you need something to prove that it's fast. And one of the most popular benchmarks is SuperPi. SuperPi is raw number crunching power. And here you'll, you'll see a SuperPi 1M come through in about 8 odd seconds. That's fast. Now the competition, we need to go hard, go fast, and try to get the fastest time possible. There you go guys. That's it. We've gone through, we've, we've talked about some of the, the precautions needed, uh, some of the, the parts that, that we've used today, and we've also gone through some of the BIOS systems. So you end up with something like this. We're running about 5.5 gigahertz, and we're just chilling out, having some fun. I'd like to thank Hi Cookie, thank you very much, and also Zolcorn, thanks guys. And um, I hope that you got as much out of this as we did. Really enjoyed doing this for you, and um, we, we really hope to see more overclocking. Cheers.